Welcome back, everyone. Welcome back, everyone. This is Rudy Rodriguez. Show with Combat Corner. Power come on now, the podcast. I have with me again the one, the only King Kai Stewart. He is the BKFC featherweight champion. He is defending his belt next Saturday, November 9th, at BKFC on the zone in Billings, Montana. Kai, thank you so much for being with us. Talk about this opportunity for you to fight at home as a champion. So much has happened since June when you defended your belt down here in Hollywood. What's going on? I mean, how, how, how excited are you about this fight coming up? I'm excited to be back in Big Sky Country here. We, uh, I fought in Utah. I fought in Florida, but nothing gets rowdier than a Montana crowd. So uh, we're bringing the heat. The Metro Park is going to be wild. It's been a year, almost just shy of a year and a half since I've uh, got to fight in Montana. And the, the people here are responding really well. Um, I know that from Kalispell to Miles City, there are to Sydney, uh, there are people coming to this fight. So uh, we're in a good spot, and we're feeling really great with our training. I'm feeling really like good with my body, and all it's left to do is dance. Looking at this at this fight, I mean, so much has happened since June. You know. That was that was when the Conor McGregor partnership was announced, right? At your fight in June, if I recall correctly, and now it seems to have completely exploded with Conor at different events. I was at the event in Hollywood in September. Um, there's another one coming up next in December, actually. You have this the the fight in Spain. You have Sturgis. I mean, what was the did you go to the Sturgis card since that's up in your neck of the woods? Oh yeah. What was that like? Because, I mean, from an aerial view, it looked like the most wild thing I've ever seen. It looked like it was in the middle of the street. What was that like? It was very fun. Um, the mm-hmm. atmosphere was fun. Uh, the best part about it was is Connor picked – Connor freaking McGregor picked me out of the crowd, and he came directly up to me. He cheers me with mm-hmm. the uh, with the Forged Irish Stout, and that was the – that's the uh, – the duo, the combat sports duo that we all knew that we needed. So, mm-hmm. so yeah, a, a relationship was born, and uh, I'm just <laughs> pretty speechless. Like now, now, like that's all fun, but mm-hmm. now I have a job to do. Um, it, this doesn't change anything. I, I actually fought. I knew McGregor was watching my last fight, so um, you know it's business as usual, and that's. It's huge. Being able to keep the, the cool mindset instead of saying, oh, we made it. Oh, we made it. Nah, there, we got a long way to go. So, uh, mm-hmm. so yeah. Talk about this fight. You're fighting Jimmy Rivera, former U- UFC star. Um, I mean, th- talk about that matchup. I mean, I read that you – I'm actually sure I read, I heard, I read – I saw one of your videos that you changed camps for this fight. You made a move in your camp. You're going, you know, doing uh, – for new partners and so forth, training partners and stuff like that. Can you talk about that? Yeah, so I actually did it last camp, but kept it super. Okay. Uh, it was a three a three week deal, three weeks out of the six weeks that I knew about the fight because I kind of mm-hmm. got quite short notice, and uh, yeah. I loved it so much. Brady Heastan is amazing partner. Uh, Coach Coral Desro for uh, Eagle Stone Boxing Club is amazing. Coach Dylan Lemery with DL Training Systems is amazing. So. Uh, so yeah, uh, it, it just it made sense, and me and my girlfriend moved over, and my girlfriend's actually fighting on the amateur side of the card um, mm-hmm. next Saturday night. So Dakota Rough Road. So we both were training like mm-hmm. professionals, and uh, it's we're gonna run this town. Billings, Montana is, is ours. Okay, talk about your opponent, Jimmy Rivera. What are you? What have you seen from him? Obviously, he's a combat veteran, combat sports veteran. Uh, you know and shorter guy than you you're what five eight he's five four i'm helping have you seen five four guys in your division that you had to fight i mean are you used to fighting shorter guys or or guys pretty much in your height range um i have fought one person near jimmy's height i think he was five foot two five foot th- i think it was five oh, wow. three. um and mm-hmm. i knocked, knocked him out in the first round so um and i've been the shorter guy before you know against hd i was the shorter guy mm-hmm. bar. um I'm not banking on it. I'm not banking on the hype being the, the, the money maker. I'm banking on that my heart, my want, my my drive and love for the sport and for competition, I think that's what's gonna be greater than Jimmy. 
uh, not like we're not even mentioning skill for skill. I know that I'm a better boxer than him. Um, I, I've still, I'm still learning like the basics. Uh, perfect practice makes perfect, and the basics wins fights. And I never knew the basics of boxing. So Eagle Stone Boxing. Yeah. Amateur USA Boxing Club, and that's uh, that's really what I've been really working and learning on because I know that's my hole. I know that I'm a dog. I know that mm -hmm. I can clean guys. I know that I can push the pace. But now we're gonna see a lot better boxing. We're gonna see a lot like our, <clears throat> I, I can throw bombs. I can throw some sneaky punches. Like what am I gonna do? It's gonna be a really really fun sight to see because I become BKFC 2.0 next Saturday night. So it's pretty crazy. Look, looking at the fights that you've had, I mean, you, you beat uh, Brian Duran El Gallo in the fight down here. You beat HD Howard Davis. Your fight before that, Louis Lopez, right, was before that. I mean, you've gone through the best guys at at your division, and now, you, I mean, how because of those types of battles. I mean, because th these are fights that you're having. You know, talk about that going into a fight with Jimmy Rivera. Um, and how you you know what that does for you because you're used to the battle you're used to the war and you're used to being you know really bringing that you bring the dog so yeah jimmy rivera brings a really special matchup to me because i know that he's a legend and i know that he he brings a lot of experience to the game and it's it's where it this is definitely my cross the bridge fight you know i, I cross mm -hmm. the bridge into a a serious just combat sports contender all sports you know all combat mm -hmm. i'm i'm really staking my claim here um, I, I believe that in terms of bare knuckle boxing and what the skills needed for bare knuckle, I think HD, um, Brian Duran, I think these guys were all better than Jimmy Rivera. Jimmy Rivera just mm -hmm. has a lot more experience than all of us. Literally, I think, yeah. uh, out of pro experience, Jimmy, how me, Duran and HD all sit right now with how many fights we have. I think Jimmy Rivera still has more than all three of us combined. So, yeah. um, this is definitely my opportunity to, to cross that bridge from a young gun to a established guy. Because, yeah, I have three world titles, but Bare Knuckle is still getting bigger. So the bigger that Bare Knuckle gets, the more fights I need to win just to stay on top. So uh, th that's really the goal. Go out there, have fun. Wins and losses will take care of themselves. As long as I'm having fun and doing the right things outside of the fight camp, then everything else will happen for a reason. So, um, yeah, I, I, it's just a, another opportunity to test myself. When um, <clears throat> talk about the the zone deal. I mean, you're fighting on the zone now. Before you're fighting on on the BKFC app. Now you're fighting. This is this is you're now on the zone. I mean, talk about that. I mean, just that what that does for you because you know this is this is now this is the Connor thing where you brought. I mean, I'm sure he was a big part of the the zone deal. And um, talk about that and how that's how big that is for you pretty big you know um i like it's that's for the overseas market you know yeah. uh united states market you know we're still competing I, I would say competing with the ufc we're not trying to take away from the ufc we're just a whole other sport you know what i mean mm -hmm. so we're trying to gain garner that attention but having the european market the asian markets like that that's where jazone is really <laughs> big so that's just yeah. global sport that's making my world title become more of a world title you know what i mean so, uh, yeah, yeah uh, it's exciting. And the fact that the Montana is a DAZN show and uh, I'm really mm -hmm. the notable name on there. I know they have Julian Lane on there, but outside of that, like I'm the pay-per-view guy. And uh, it, it makes me happy that they trust me with that, uh, that opportunity. But also maybe we see Conor McGregor make an appearance in Montana. I think uh, that, that would be like a dream come true. He's coming to watch me in my home state, which I have no idea if he's coming. Um, it... It's a DAZN show, and DAZN, yeah. like, uh, the DAZN deal came after Connor came, so maybe he has a, a heart for the DAZN, the, the DAZN deal and the wrestler with the mustache. So, <laughs> you know, it, it, it's funny because, you know, he came, he came down here for the Hollywood fight in September. He was down here for that fight. Um, you know, he was a big part of the, the post-fight press conference that I was at. It, 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 was a, it was a hell of a card, um, you know, and, and watching, you know, the fights that you had there and then you see what happened in spain yeah. you had i mean an absolute b bloodbath <laughs> slobber knocker of a fight um that i mean my god but when you hear like for example i think dan hooker was at that fight card ufc fighter and he's loving bare knuckle fighting 
you know, he seems like the type of guy that would um, thrive in bare knuckle just on his style because he's kind of a crazy person. Like, oh, y'all, <laughs> y'all, you know, y'all have that that twitch, you know what I mean? That you might be the nicest guy here, but don't scratch me, man. <laughs> and, yeah. and Hooker, you know, I mean, just his last fight that he had in the UFC where it looked like he was getting beat up. And then all of a sudden it's like, where the hell this come from <laughs> type of thing. When you see guys like Dan Hooker, you know, really j- jumping on board, I, I, what, do you th- what do you think of something, something like that? Dan Hooker would be fun. Um, fun, for the, fun for the sport. He's a pretty big uh, UFC name. I don't know if he's quite done the UFC yet, but, mm-hmm. you know, we're, we're getting to the point where we're not going to need, where we don't need. It's not yeah. that we're not going to need, but we don't need the UFC guys anymore. I think it brings more more eyes. It'll bring New Zealand mm-hmm. eyes, Australia eyes. But you mm-hmm. know, it's it's. Re- I don't. I I, th- I just think that it, it'll be fun to have those names here. And you know, if I could ever fight any of those big names, uh, if I ever move up to one fifty five, which I'm hoping to. Uh, oh right. okay. But uh, and we'll go from there. Uh, I'll, I I'd accept a. Anybody from the UFC that wants to come over, because I do think that I can compete with anybody from there. You just had the big card, the, the big card that was in uh, in Denver. I saw Justin Gaethje was at that card, and he was raving. So it's like you see a lot of UFC guys that are really starting to see what's going on here and what y'all are doing, and, and, it, and it's pretty impressive. Um, you know, what are your overall? I mean, how has the last six months been for you? You know, you came off of two huge wins. I mean. What has it been like for you? I mean, you're the champion. You get to enjoy it. You got to enjoy it a little bit. But I mean, we, I know you have that dog in you. You love you love to get down. We we would love to. Uh, we've been golfing quite a bit and uh, mm-hmm. had our fair share of some parties. I traveled some, and you know, mm-hmm. I'm, the most fun I had was after my first title. It was. Uh, yeah. it was <coughs> we really went out and had some fun. Um, Boating that summer, that was the busiest summer. I went to the Rick Ross pool party. Me and my girlfriend got to travel to Florida together and have a whole bunch of mm-hmm. fun, hard, mm-hmm. with no other obligation. It was literally just free time. Yeah. And uh, but yeah, this last six months, I've really just been locking in on trying to get the business side of things going and making sure I'm doing everything right because now I'm in deep. I'm. This is a real career. This is my job. This is what I'm gonna do. This is how I'm gonna make my future. And I'm going to make it and I just really knew I can make a real run at this. And so I, I now I have a nutritionist. I have uh, strength and conditioning. I have a okay. team of four, five, I think a total of five different guys working on my management team from the social media aspect to the contracts. Like it, we're, we're doing the right yeah. thing. That's what this last six months has been, and that's what the next six months is going to be. And then hopefully after the next six months, I should be able to really start Calm it down a little bit. Hopefully, we have another fight in between now and then. Stack pile a little bit more money, and then uh, maybe we can, you know, really take a deep breath and uh, really evaluate um, what's next. Because I believe black and yellow, and mm-hmm. but I do know that I'm gonna get the Sean O'Malley fight one day. I don't care if he has he's got a team of gloves up. I think his UFC uh-huh. career was really exposed by Marab, and uh, yeah, yeah, and I welcome him with with open arms, but. We're gonna, we're getting to the point where there's nobody in my weight that I beat everybody. The current number one guy in the weight division is only number one because I beat everybody in front of him, and now he's on a card with a one and one fighter. Like mm-hmm. he's gonna call for my name, and I'm like, no, I I went through freaking glass to get to my title. So mm-hmm. I either want a super fight or I want a second title after this fight. So um, that's. You're- you're That's, talking. You're talking about Brandon. Brandon Allen, right? Yeah. The number one. Okay. Because yeah. I mean, he's yeah, got I, like be real. He's his knockouts. They're they're pretty cool. He's got some pretty cool knockouts. But his last fight, he was getting dogged by a clinch mm-hmm. fight, and then he lands. Mm-hmm. With hook. So it's mm-hmm. like, bro, beat somebody in the top five, and then come knocking at the door because then I'll accept the fight with wide open arms. But everybody else had to prove themselves. Mm-hmm. You're sitting here. Scheduled against a one-in-one fighter. Stop talking. Just stop. You're <laughs> embarrassing yourself. You're embarrassing the division. So, 
I, th- I do think top to bottom, 145 is the toughest division in the organization. Oh, yeah. We just, people got to stop being scared to fight each other. We saw HD. He didn't have any really top five fights. Louis Lopez beat him. You know, it was by a cut, you know, and we didn't get to see the mm-hmm. full fight. A win's a win in bare knuckle. And um, yeah. Brian Durant, six first round KOs, but then he goes against an elite contender like myself and we saw what happened. So we need some order and the King is bringing order to the featherweight division. And hopefully we get that double champ status. Cause yeah. Cause I mean, you just saw that, uh, I mean, age Howard Davis beat uh, James Brown down here. Um, yeah. I know he still want, I know they, they also both fought at 155. They fought heavy. I know they fought heavy. Um, mm-hmm. I know HD was the backup in Spain or what have you, but, uh, that, that's I, know, I, I, feel. I hope HD gets the 155 shot. Let's give him a title because he is a beast, and I do think Howard mm-hmm. Davis, um, deserves that chance. But I do also think that the second he has that title, he knows that I'm going to come for it, and he knows that I'm going to get it. So let's let him be a world champ. Let's let him enjoy the fruits of his labor. He's worked hard enough to get that, and then I'll just hop right up there, get my double champ status, and then uh, you know that's superstardom right there. That would that would be a firework fight right there. I know a double, a, a you know super fight between two champions. That would be amazing. I mean, has uh has the B, the BKFC done that yet? Lorenzo Hunt was a double. I think champ. Hunt, yeah. Double champ. Christine Faria was a double champ. So talk about the, did, talk about that. Uh, I mean, I, I know you have to get get going real quick, but um, did you you got a chance to see the fight between um, Britt Hart and uh. Would she fight it? it her last fight. What did you think of that fight? Taylor Starling? Yeah, yeah. What'd you think of that fight? That was a Sturgis, right? Yeah. 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 What'd you think of that fight? Uh I thought it was good. Um, yeah. you know, I think that <sighs> there was no knockdowns to my knowledge. I don't I can't remember a knockdown. I was there live. Um, and I thought that Taylor was pushing the pace. I thought Taylor was landing way more punches. However, Britton Hart was stunning her with that overhand right. And, you know, mm-hmm. damn means something. And I, I just feel like it was a, it was a close fight. Taylor mm-hmm. Stark you know, out, like, I know she outstruck Britton Hart, but, you know, the big thundering shots that stumbled Taylor Starling and the reactions that there was, I think that's mm-hmm. why I went. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because that was a fight that I thought was really close. And uh, when, I, when I saw it, I was like, well, this is, this is a close one. Um, but man, I appreciate you, brother. I, I know you got stuff to do, man. All this, all the best to you next Saturday, folks. If you are, if you are not aware yet, King Kai Stewart is defending his featherweight championship against Jimmy Rivera, BKFC on the zone in Montana. If you don't have tickets, are you still selling? T- I, I don't live in Montana, but if you have tickets. I still got tickets, $45, $60, come get them. So uh, floor seats are entirely sold out. They sold mm. out literally 30 minutes. And then, wow. uh, and then uh, you know, we're still chipping away the GA tickets, but it's Montana. People are going to be four hours away making a 24-hour decision. It's just how Montana goes. Uh, so, folks, if you don't have tickets, get with, uh, you know, direct message. His, his name will be tagged in this video on Instagram and on YouTube. Reach out to him and get your tickets because it's going to be a night, a real nice night of fights. And I know that Julian Lane's fighting Angulo, which is that's going to be a dog fight too. I mean, Angulo's that as up as the co-main event. They do co-main event. That's going to be a dog fight. <laughs> that's funny. They they I thought they were going to put Brandon Allen as co-main. See, that's that's it. He has no pay-per-view power. They don't. <laughs> Okay, I'm glad I'm glad people are re- are seeing this. Like shit. I, I, hey, respect, I let's be fair. I respect everybody in my division. Like I said, I think we're the toughest division. But yeah, whenever you, from whenever you see things from a technical standpoint, you're just sitting there like, man, it ain't that easy. It ain't that of easy. Co- so, of course, like, that's how you have, that's how you have to view it for sure. It's technical. I mean, absolutely. But anyway, thank you for having me on, and uh, hey. let's let's maybe even follow up after this fight, and uh, let's discuss what's next because I'm gonna are knock. You, what? Are you coming back? Are you coming down here for December? Yeah. To watch and enjoy uh, yourself. I'm like 50 percent sure I'm gonna come because uh, we're for sure going to Philly. Uh, mm-hmm. Kind of depends if Bare Knuckle wants to bring oh. me. Here. 
So. Yeah, that Philly fight, I know, I know uh, David Feldman wants to make that a monster because that's his home. Yeah, I want to be yeah. in Philly. Get, uh, if I can get Jimmy Rivera out of here in the first round and pretty unscathed, that I, I'm mm-hmm. going to maybe even get my champ champ status um, on Philly. So Okay. All right, brother, man. I appreciate you, man. Thank you so much again, man. Yeah, have a all great. The be- all, all the best to you, bro. Yeah, keep keep grinding, and uh, yeah, we'll talk after the show. Enjoy. Yeah, the we've grown. By the way, we've we, we've grown from like two thousand subscribers to about six thousand in that in the time period as well. Dude, fuck yeah! Yeah, we, yeah, we've grown. We'll yeah, man. Done. So I appreciate you. Yeah, keep getting her done, and uh, yeah, contact me whenever. Talk to you later. All right, man. brother. Take it easy, man. Later. Everyone, that was King Kai Stewart. He is the BKFC featherweight champion. He is defending his belt again against Jimmy Rivera in Billings, Montana. BKFC on the zone, Montana. This is a stacked card you have on the co-main event. Alfredo Angulo versus Julian Lane. That's going to be a slug fest right there. And just so you know, the guy that... uh that um king guy was talking about brandon allen he is actually fighting against he is fighting against a one-on-one fighter as he said timmy mason uh so they will cross paths while they're in while they're both in billing so we shall see what happens after that fight after kai's fight if he comes away with the with the, with the win and retains his belt and th- this guy and allen wins his fight let's see if uh there's some type of uh Set up for the next fight. Obviously, he's doing a great job promoting because that's what it's all about, folks. You got to promote these fights because the B- BKFC is a growing organization. It's a growing sport, and we got to get the word out there because it is exciting. It is fast. It is bloody, <laughs> and I love every second of it. And if you haven't seen it yet, be sure to check out these fights. You can go check them out on the Zone, the BKFC app, and then of course, if you're in Montana. You should be at this fight next week. I, if I lived in Montana, I would absolutely be there. So I appreciate uh, Kai Stewart for joining us again. Um, I wish him the best, and uh, thank you so much. Be sure to like, subscribe, and follow. This is Combat Corner, powered by Come On Now, the podcast. Have a good night. Come on now. <laughs>